Ms. Pollard and Chris are teaching a science and math together, and in this class we do multiple experiments. We did a rocket launch that we were told to build rockets for the most economical cost. We had to design it using fake money and little pieces of paper that we had. We had to, we were actually going to launch it on Mountain View Field. And to do that, we had to follow specific instructions so it would be very aerodynamic as well as efficient. So I had them design and build their own rockets just using paper and um, cereal boxes. You actually learned a lot about aerodynamics and how the fins will affect the flying and how the nose cone shape will affect the flying and how tight the rocket is. It's pretty cool. Four, three, two, one. It's fun. Instead of learning science from like a textbook, our teacher wants us to do science as if it was real stuff. So we made our rockets and we did engineering drawings. So we got used to that. And also we did all this so that we would be able to make better predictions and everything, and we would have a first-hand experience out in the field. Then we had little computers that we put on board that allowed them to collect a whole stack of data that they could use and analyze. And so actually a huge amount of the project, over half of the project's been on the analysis side of looking at these data and analyzing that data. We started with the information we um, got from the launch, and there was a sheet of paper, and it had top speed and all this other stuff on it, like peak acceleration and peak altitude and stuff like that. And we put it on there and then we stuck it into a computer and um, now we're making a PowerPoint for the people at the university about the rockets. So these little computers uh, that go in the rocket were uh, pretty neat to tell you how long the launch lapse time was, how long the rocket burned for, the engine itself, how long it coasted until the parachute deployed, how uh, its maximum height, its, its descent rate, and uh, yeah, the elapsed time of the overall experiment. So you get to see this really cool curve from takeoff to landing. We put it into a computer program called Excel, and off that we did, everyone put their data in, and off that we made graphs and part of the project was they formed companies and within that company they were given a budget and they had to stay within that budget. They had to write checks, they had to keep a balance sheet, they had to make a projected budget and they, had a, they were doing all of this while building their rockets and while doing various tests on it. And so I was trying to integrate in the financial math into the scientific math into the measurement and trying to bring those all together into one project. Since I was the business manager I had to keep track of the checks and um, it was fun in a way, but it was kind of confusing at first. The other thing I really want them to do is to be able to present upon it, but also to be able to come back and say, okay, if we could do this again, what would this, what would this rocket look like? And that's going to be, that's actually their focus, and they're naturally doing that. They're like, we need to launch a little bit bigger. These are the problems we had, and, you know, pro problem shooting for the next one. Even with unexpected results, they still help you get that much closer to your goal. So you'd never want to throw those away because those numbers could very well make it so that it prevents failure next time or success. So you always want to keep those for your next experiments. Later we're going to make a bigger rocket, not much bigger, but and then the whole class will put the best data into that one rocket and see if the data from the small ones actually applies to like larger sized um, rockets, like a bigger scale. Wherever we can do something interdisciplinary with these kids and, and tie things together, I think it benefits them greatly. So when she mentioned she was doing rockets, I said, well, uh, what kind of background are you going to give them on rockets? And, uh, and what do they know? And so we figured out that they probably don't know anything about rockets. And so we put together a history of rockets. And so the kids actually researched different periods of time in rocketry from the 1500s to the present in groups and then they made PowerPoint presentations and they taught each other. I learn a tremendous amount by teaching and so I'm no different than they are. If they teach they'll learn more too. Before in classes I've done a lot of writing notes and watching videos and reading out of a textbook so this is a very different um, way of building things and it's very much more fun I think because it's more hands-on and you're not sitting at a desk for 
eight hours just listening. You're outside, you're going places, you're building stuff. I remember that it was easier to learn it that way because it's easier to do it right out of the book than it is to apply it to like real life things. But at the same time, it's a lot more fun to do it out here. You learn more once you understand it. When I'm reading out of a textbook, I can't exactly learn just my brain doesn't do that. And whenever I'm doing experiments like she does, I learn a lot. Oh, I so appreciate the opportunity to teach this way and to help inspire the, the middle school students to learn science and math this way and not to be forced to um, abide by a very set curriculum. Schweitzer Engineering Lab provided the funding for this through the employee donation program. And I we had multiple employees donate money to this, which gave us plenty of money to actually buy the rocket engines and buy a few of the supplies. It wasn't a terribly expensive project, but it definitely um, made it possible for us to have these, these online computers, which is really cool. <laughs>